I'm here at Kampong Baru Kuala Lumpur and we are looking for the legendary Nasi Lemak Wanjo in search of the best Nasi Lemak. I don't say legendary lightly. Wanjo is the name for Nasi Lemak here in Kampong Baru and has been for the past some 60 years now. And get this, the number of Google ratings for this place is over 9,000! <laughs> Although I do see some red flags. The biggest being, it's semi buffet style. Not as in all you can eat, but it's a buffet line where you point and choose the items that you want. Meaning, nothing is made on the spot. I don't think I have to repeat myself at this point of the series what that means for the iconic Ayam Goreng Bedin Bar. They do have items that are less time sensitive, like the rendangs and the sambal ayams. So maybe that can do some carrying. One way to find out. Let's get it, guys. Hey! Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy the content, the best way to support me is what you are doing right now. Giving me the video watch time. All of the reviews in this series are strictly unsponsored. If I don't pay for it, I won't talk about it. Which means that I have to make money in other ways. Please consider joining as a member of the channel if you can afford to do so. Or subscribe if you haven't already. Your support is much appreciated. And now back to the video. Hello. Uh, nasi lama makan. Uh, ayam goreng. Yeah. Uh, drumstick. Yeah. Drumstick. Yeah. Uh, paru, paru go. Uh, uh, beef rendang. Ah, sambal sot. Uh, the. Terima kasih. Twenty-eight forty ten. Thank you. Thank you. That was fast. Okay, my whole plate is decorated. <laughs> Which makes it difficult to get some clean rice. You guess this would do? Mmm. Now this is something I haven't felt in a while. The rice feels very normal. You see how it's like... It doesn't stick. It doesn't want to squish. That squish is something that I've grown fond of. Give this a go. This is so easy to eat. It has the wettest rice so far in the Malaysia arc. Did I order wrong? I didn't. Wow, I need to say it. Eh. This rice tastes the least like the nasi lemak rice so far. The coconut fragrance is weak. I can barely taste it when uh, had alone. And when the rice inevitably get some gravy from all the other dishes, it's as good as having it with white rice or like a nasi champo. Taste aside, there's no that sticky, kuey texture to it as well. Which makes me suspect that texture is caused by an excess of fat or starch that gives it that rich lemakness. But here, hardly detectable. And now with the sambal. Sweet default sambal with some tamarind. This actually tastes like a Malaysian chompang. Okay, we have to get started on the sides. They are ayam goreng, beautifully fried. You even get to choose your piece, like breast, thigh, chicken drumstick, wing. Let's give this a go. Chicken pet, very tasty, very rich, but the smell is quite obvious, even with this much uh, marinade. Really well marinated though. And then we have one of my favorite dishes, paru goreng, which is beef lungs. I know a bit intimidating, but this is one of my favorites. Oh. Oh, this is good. Very often this is overcooked to death, but here it at least has some softness. The inner smell is also relatively cleaned up, leaving just the umami. Oh, wow, it's really quite good. And then the beef rendang. Great flavor and texture, but the meat is a bit old. The meat has uh, shrunk back and tightened up after being uh, left for a while, which I guess is a little bit inevitable, I don't know, but I will guess I'll mention it. And then sambal sotong. This is cuttlefish. Mmm, very bouncy. Oh, this is really well cooked. This is good. And then a dish we don't see too often, sambal cockles. Oh, very sweet. Very, very sweet. But I dig it. Okay, all done. What an interesting nasi lemak. I need to think a little bit about this. So yeah, same plan. 
I'm gonna walk to the two buildings over there and I'll see you guys soon. Recap. Very average rice. I'm not even sure whether you can call it average because it's greatly lacking in the mark. The rice doesn't have the squish and I think it's about time I at least try to explain the squish. I don't necessarily know what it means but the best way to get the right answer is to shout a possible wrong answer into the internet. So this is what I think it means. Today's rice was watery, so moisture content is probably a big clue. When you cook nasi lemak rice, you cook it with a combination of water and coconut milk in terms of the liquid. Whether you add any other oil, uh, fragrant oils or animal fat is uh, improvisation. But mostly water and coconut milk. So in order to have a squish, the relative proportion of water to coconut milk needs to be lower. That means there needs to be less water and a high amount of fat. The second clue, which is something that I haven't talked about too much because I haven't had the chance, is the glycerin index of the rice. This is loosely detected by the starchiness and fullness of the rice. If you compare a mouthful of white basmati rice to a white full of uh, jasmine long grain rice, the latter will feel sweeter and like more full, more lemak. So I think it's the combination of these two factors that make up um, that squish in nasi lemak rice. This is what I'm theorizing at this point. What I do know for sure is I like the squish. So far, all of the rice that I squished taste better than the ones that have no squish. So that brings me to nasi lemak wandros rice. The rice is not lemak. The sambal is sweet and default, but the sides are really well cooked. The paru goreng, still soft, very tasty, no stench of the innards, probably one of the better ones I had. The rendang decent, the cuttlefish cook very well, still so bouncy. <laughs> very easy to eat rice and sambal, with very good sides. Isn't this reminding you of a place? So Chompang fans, this place will be for you guys. But in terms of what I'm looking for in the nasi lemak, this is not it. <sighs> I know the rating. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. <laughs> One plate I walk for the nasi lemak, two plates I'll take a bus for the nasi lemak, and three plates I'll go anywhere in Kuala Lumpur for the nasi lemak. And nasi lemak wanjo is... Zero plates. Now listen to me very carefully. Nasi lemak wanjo was still made for a very good meal, but in my search for the best nasi lemak, the nasi lemak that I like, what else can I do when your nasi is not lemak. I understand that, you know, some people like it this way. I understand that it makes for a better daily meal. But when the nasi is not lemak, it doesn't even reach the stage where you can showcase the skill of balancing that lemakness with herbs like lemongrass, pandan leaves, or even go further like gelanggao. This would be a one plate, but we are in the nasi lemak capital of the world. I'm just scratching the surface of the nasi lemaks here and the difference is already so big. Similarly to Chompang, if we were to compete as a Cai Fan or economical rice, or their parallel would be Nasi Champo or even Nasi Kanda, not really because there's no curries, um, Nasi Couscous, Couscous, then Wanjo will be very competitive. But in my framework for Nasi Lemak, it's really far off. My Nasi Lemak has to be Lemak. It's not a crazy idea, right? I'm not crazy for expecting that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I have for you guys this time. I'll see you all next week. Bye!